the Blériot 5190 Santos Dumont represented one of France's most ambitious attempts to master long-range transatlantic airmail in the 1930s. It was a large parasol wing flying boat built to meet a French government requirement for reliable mail service to South America. The aircraft stood out immediately. Its hull sat unusually low in the water, while the pilots and flight engineers worked inside a tall, rounded pylon that also supported the wing, a structure often compared to a submarine conning tower. The 5190 used four Hispano Suiza 12 reduced bank number engines. Three sat along the leading edge of the wing, and a fourth worked in a pusher arrangement on the center line behind the cockpit. The wings were thick enough for in flight access to engines for repairs. Twin stabilizing floats supported the hull. Fully fueled, the aircraft carried more than 8,500 kilograms, 18,740 pounds, of fuel in 16 tanks, enabling ranges near 5,000 kilometers, 3,107 miles. Payload capacity during ocean crossings was limited to about 600 kilograms, 1,323 pounds, because of the need for a double crew of eight. The prototype flew on the 3rd of August, 1933. Under Chief Pilot Lucien Bossutrot, it completed months of testing before entering transatlantic service. In late 1934, the aircraft was officially named Santos Dumont and delivered to Air France. When the Latacor 300 was down for maintenance in early 1935, the Blériot 5190 carried virtually all French transatlantic mail, averaging one crossing per week. It would ultimately complete 38 Atlantic crossings, more than any other French mail flying boat of the period. The program's promise created risk. The government ordered three additional aircraft, and Blériot Aeronautique borrowed heavily to build them. The order was abruptly cancelled in 1936, without compensation. The company collapsed financially, and Louis Blériot died that August. Only one 5190 ever flew. It remained in service until mid-1937 and then disappeared from frontline use. Today, the Blériot 5190 survives only in photographs, reports, and engineering drawings. Its legacy lies in the lessons learned about oceanic navigation, engine redundancy, and crew ergonomics aboard long-range flying boats. It demonstrated that transatlantic mail could be scheduled and sustained, even if its own future was cut short by economics rather than engineering.